A more serious moment nearby is all of Kenny Tran's chips are in the middle pre-flop. Right now, his ace five, about a two to one dog to Joe Cotta's pocket eights. Cotta just 21, trying to knock out one of the most feared players left. The flop is for Trey Trey. Cotta still leads, but Tran picks up a gut shot straight draw. Kenny doesn't get too excited over the draw. Turn card is a nine no help to Kenny. Kenny started his hand with less than 10 big blinds left. He's gonna need an ace or a deuce to stick around. The river is a six, and that is it for the highly regarded pro, Kenny Tran. He will win almost $58,000. Kenny Tran was 16th at the main event two years ago. Another stellar showing. Making this far, it's a dream come true. It's really hard to go this far, especially in this big of player field. Dean Hamrick, good friends of mine. Dean Hamrick finishes in 10th place. I took 10th last year. He told me, whatever you do, don't take 10th place. Disappointment for him, but elation for our final nine. That's it, man. You know, that's that's it. That's ball game, you know, right there. Kelly Kim might be the happiest man in the room. Dean Hamrick, the most heartbroken. It almost would, it would have rather happened with 28 people left to be that close and actually sitting there. It sucks, man. <laughs> it sucked. This is a once in a lifetime shot. Not many times do you get a chance to get this far. I definitely think I have what it takes to make the final table. So right now, it's definitely a possibility, and I'm definitely really excited for it. Action is on Joe Cata. Joe has aces. Cata was the chip leader at his day one session, and he's never given them back. The raise to 600,000. Jamie Robbins with pocket tens. And he is all in for 1.37 million. Robbins with less than six big blinds left. He'll love those tens until he sees the aces. Ivy with 7-4. Phil, <laughs> Phil hates giving up his button. Action on the small blind, Steve Beglider, jack six, and he will fold. Now to the big blind, Antoine Saoud. And he won't play those. An automatic call from Kata to put Robbins at risk. Robbins hates to see the aces. Jamie Robbins knows that pocket aces can be cracked. Kata trying to get us closer to the final table. Just one time. Just one time. My turn. Let's go, J-Rob, one time. OK, this is his one time. Ten. Got to mark it in my book. Good call, Joe. Good call. <laughs> good call. <laughs> <laughs> a good call, a nice read by Joe Cata. <laughs> All right, so Cata trying to knock off Robbins. Aces against tens. Here's the flop. Six king deuce. The aces hold up for Joe Cata. No backdoor outs for Jamie Robbins. He's simply going to need a ten now. Uh-oh, he took off the glasses. That's akin to waving the white flag. Turn card now. Five of clubs. Robbins down to his last chance. Jamie looking for the ten ball. Each player's cheering section on pins and needles with the river to come. Joe Cata ready for the knockout. Jamie Robbins needs a 10 and a 10 only, or he is wamboozled. And the river card. Oh, he got the 10. Jamie Robbins stays alive. He got his one time, no more. <laughs> Folded to Phil Ivey, who started this final table with almost 10 million chips. He's up to 15 million now. He has ace eight offsuit. Ivy has been almost as patient as Jeff Shulman. A raise to one and a quarter million from Ivy. <laughs> so that time to play aggressive. Meg Leiter lays it down, as does Buckman. Now on 21-year-old Joe Cata with pocket fours. In the small blind. Joe Cata short stacked. All in. And it is time to get aggressive for Cata. All in with those fours. How much is it? This would cost Ivy about one third of his chip stack. Ivy with ace eight. Ivy wondering if Kata has a big pair or a better ace. His final table moments becoming more dramatic with every passing hand. Ivy getting almost two to one on a call here. It might be time for him to gamble. Phil commits the chips. A crossroads moment for Ivy and Kata. Kata, of course, can be knocked out. Ivy can pick up some valuable chips, or he'll be back down under 20 big blinds. You're one sick puppy. Huh? You're sick. How, how, how could I fold? Yeah, I know. I was wondering where you took so long. I was trying to figure out a way to fold. I think. A reluctant call from Ivy, who's in danger of being bounced back to his starting stack. If Cata loses his hand, Peter Eastgate's year-old record as youngest main event champ ever will stand. Here we go to the flop. Cata at risk. 
Deuce Ken Trey had his pocket for his hold up through the flop. Neither player had been all in and called prior to the final table of this main event. This is a crucial race, and Kata is winning it at the moment. Bill Ivey trying to find some way to knock off the young Joe Kata. The turn card is a nine. That won't do it. Ivey still trailing. Kata bobbing and weaving like a boxer, trying to avoid the knockout punch. What a moment this championship table has come down to for these two strong players. Kata trying to hang on. Ivy trying to pick up some steam. Ivy looking for help. And Phil Ivy needs an ace or an eight to end Joe Kata's bid to become the youngest main event champ ever. The river card is a seven. Joe Kata doubles up. He's up to over 12 million chips. Back in. Nice. 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 And another big blow from a main man, Phil Ivy. <laughs> Jeff Shulman with pocket jacks. And Shulman putting together a raise. raise to one and three quarter million. Shulman is playing it very tight, but with that style, you do have to pick up hands once in a while. Fold it around to Joe Cata in the small blind with pocket trays. Cata only 21, but he says he will be crushed if he doesn't win here. Raise in front of him. All in. And all he in. shoves all in. Over 11 million. Well, there's a good chance he's about to be crushed with those pocket threes. Saud gave it up. Jeff asking for a count. Shulman would need almost 10 million to make this call and put Kata at risk. Jeff has picked his spots very carefully. 11. And he needs to chip up. Shulman makes the call and the two short stacks will tangle. The three other players over 50 million chips, these two under 20 million. So both trying to make some noise and chip up. And Joe Kata's youngest ever bid now in dire straits. The showman camp likes what they see with the jacks against the trays. Two, four, five to make it interesting? I don't want interesting. That's Two, pretty four, much five. my motto in life. How about Jack? How about Jack 3-3? Three, three. <laughs> Jack on the turn. I didn't know you could negotiate the board. <laughs> I'm greedy. Me too. <laughs> Showman's pocket jacks, a four to one favorite to knock out Joe Cata with his pocket trays. And here's the flop. Oh, and there's a tray! to turn the tables on Jeff Shulman. Kata tearing a page out of Darwin Moon's suck-out book. And oh look, Coach Howmuth with a silent pep talk for Jeff Shulman. Jeff facing a crippling defeat here at the hands of young Joe Kata. The kid with a dream is living a fantasy at this final table. Turn card is a seven. No help to Jeff Shulman. Kata still good with his set. And Jack? Jeff pleading with the dealer. Halmuth with no game plan here. I can't watch. I feel like I will cards. Be a man and watch. Only a river jack now will send Joe Cata home. The river card is a queen. Another double up for the 21 year old who's over 23 million now, his high point of the night. The 21 year old is on a roll. His chance to become the youngest main event champion is alive and well. And for Joe Cata, this moment is a dream come true. Poker's been my life for some time now. When I was 17, that was when I knew I was going to play in the World Series, and that's when I had to wait four years to be able to play in it. When I turned 21, everyone's like, oh, are you excited to turn 21 and go to the bar and stuff like that? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm excited to turn 21 so I can go play in the main event. Time to get the ball rolling. I mean, to be able to finally enter and see the player field, I was pretty excited. <laughs> you play, like, football your whole life, and then you dream to win the Super Bowl. I mean, this is what I can win is, like, the main event. Joe's 21 years old, trying to replace Peter Eastgate as youngest main event champ ever. Yeah, I was on Peter Eastgate's table. I think it was, like, day three or day four. We were just having conversation, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to beat your record. He said, he's like, yeah, he's like, you can do it. But, uh, I mean, we were just both joking around. The record's important, but the real goal is to win it. I mean, I play tournaments for first place. I mean, the bracelet's everything. Joe Cata with pocket deuces in the small blind. From Michigan. I have no ties there. Cata looking to raise it up. He does raise it to a little more than two and a half million. Now Saud in the big blind. And two queens for the Frenchman. 
If Saoud wins, he could ignite a moneymaker type effect in France. By the way, Saoud won a $50 online satellite into the main event. Moneymaker won a $40 satellite in 2003. Saoud with a re-raise to five and three-quarter million. Back to young Joe Cata. Come on. All in. And he moves all in. And this would be for half of Antoine's stack. He wants to take a deep breath and make sure he hasn't run into aces or kings. Carter. Antoine oh. does make the call to Bacata at risk. And an embarrassed Joe Cata shows his deuces. And Cata in big trouble. Yeah, I'm surprised Joe Cata pushed there, Lon. He had 40 big blinds left and just misread the strength of Saud's hands. Cata has put his fans to the ringer here tonight. If Saud can hang on, he'll own almost 120 million chips. Saud began this hand with 80 million and the chip lead. Cata will have 80 million and the chip lead if he gets lucky. Darvin hoping Cata doesn't get lucky so he can be heads up. There's the flop. Oh! A deuce for Cata. He gets the set. Unbelievable for Joe Cata. He did it to Jeff Shulman and now does it to Saud. You don't want the best hand here. You want the best luck. Wow, Joe Cata now in dominating positions. He's a tray on the turn. He keeps the lead. It seems like Joe Cata should be 100 miles away now with no chips. He keeps coming back and coming back, and now he's about to become the chip leader. Saud now the one looking for a miracle. Darwin thinking heads up, may have to wait. Cata needs to dodge a queen to double up. River card is a six, and yet another big double up for Joe Canna, and with that one comes the chip lead. Saud taking the bad beat quietly. Canna looks down at ace king, a big hand. Suddenly, Kata has the look of a champion who's been through 12 tough rounds. Raised a two and a half million. To Saud now. With the pocket pair, he's got a couple of eights. And Antoine seems a bit more weathered than Joe Kata. Understandable, considering the blow he just took. Arden. Saud moves all in for his final 46 and a half million. Now to Darvin Moon, who's been such a big participant in so many huge hands, but he'll sit this one out. So the raise back to Joe Kata. Does he want to put more than half his stack at risk with the ace king? Well, he just picked up these chips. Cool. And he will put him to work. Saud at risk, but ahead with the pocket pair. Saud again ahead of Joe Kata, and he's going to have to win this race to keep his main event alive. For Kata to knock out Saud, he'll have to come from behind again. This is for the tournament. 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 94 million in the pot. Darwin nonchalant. They're not his chips, but a defining main event moment. Whoever wins could be headed to Title Town. Whoever loses could be headed to Palookaville. The respective cheering sections get behind their guys in this huge hand. Kata looking to pair up. You gotta win it. So who knows the best hand guarantees little at this final table. Now the flop. Five, four, five, no immediate help for Kata. And that quiets down Kata Town. Saud in good shape to double up and retake the chip lead. Well, Saud hoping it stays clean on the turn in the river, and he will have his chip lead back. Turn card is at 10. The pocket eights are still best for Antoine Saud. Saud now a six to one favorite to double up. Grueling main event experience for both these players hinges on this river card. Darvin doesn't look like a guy one card from heads up. And Joe Cata's got to figure his luck's going to run out sooner or later. Cata to knock out Antoine Saoud needs an ace or a king. And now the river card. That did not just happen. Joe Cata did it again. I just saw it. I don't believe it. It's tough. You played very well. It should be me and you. Antoine Saud out in third place. You deserved it. I'm sorry. 
The World Championship bracelet and eight and a half million dollars up for grabs. Action starts on Joe Cata. Joe with pocket nines. Cata was a moneymaker baby boomer. He, he started playing online in his teens after watching Chris Moneymaker's main event win. And a standard raise now to three million. Darvin Moon, queen jack of diamonds. And Moon. Looks like he's going to raise it up. He will make it eight million to stick around. Darvin consistent at this entire final table in his aggression. Joe needs five to call. Small one. Now Kata is the aggressor trying to put Darvin Moon all in. And now it's Darvin's moment of truth. Is he willing to risk it all here? Call. And Darvin makes the call with his suited Queen Jack. Wow, Darvin plays by different rules, and he makes that all-in call for 64 million. So here we go, Joe Cata on the precipice of becoming the youngest world champion ever. Phil Halmuth's record as youngest main event champ stood for 19 years. Peter Eastgate's record could be wiped out in one. And here is the flop. Eight, two, seven. That is a good flop for Joe Cata. Darvin takes it in stoically. Cata can't look. Relax. I'm relaxed. Relax. That chant has gotten Cata through so many difficult moments. And now the turn card. It's a king that's the only paint Darvin doesn't have. Champion of the world. On day three, Kata jokingly told Peter Riskate he would break his record. Now he's one card away from doing it. Darvin Moon needs a queen or a jack, or Joe Kata will be the main event champ. And that seven will end it. Joe Kata rewrites poker history, becoming the youngest main event champ ever. You played Hall of a match. Good in. You played Hall of a match. Seriously, all the cops in the world. He's a kid with a dream come true. 21 years, 11 months, 21 days old. So many times Joe was almost out of here, but each time managed to survive. An overwhelming moment for Joe's mom and for young Joe himself. You win some, you lose some. Darvin Moon, unlikely, unexpected, and until the end, unstoppable. Oh, yeah. It's the kid is now officially the comeback kid. 6,494 players started the 2009 main event with one goal. World Series, baby! Become world champion. All you need is a ticket and a dream. Hand by hand, nine men separated themselves from the masses and stepped onto poker's biggest stage. And after one of the most explosive, dramatic, thrilling main event final tables in history. There is now only one. Let's give it up for Joe Cata. Down to nearly nothing, Cata battled back time. After time. After time. And when reality set in, the 21-year-old made poker history by becoming the youngest ever to win the main event. I'd like to thank all my fans for coming out and supporting. Youth has been served once again at the main event. Congratulations to Joe Cata, our 2009 main event champion. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarron. We'll see you next year at the World Series of Poker.